and how much bandwidth is needed to support a typical household's internet activities from work to school to leisure. And then they were asked to, to figure out how it might be possible to fulfill those bandwidth needs, which people need for an everyday life. In the modern world, you absolutely need bandwidth just to function in our society. Um, and the students studied how, how providing those needs was possible. Um, I'll say that doing this effectively required thinking at both an individual and a regional level. We saw models to predict bandwidth needs by family, as well as for entire communities. And in the final part of the problem, students were asked to design an approach for building 5G towers and nodes to understand how wireless technology could be used to fulfill those internet needs. Okay, so that's the problem. I'm really happy we focused on connectivity this year for a couple of reasons. First off, we saw this in a lot of the student presentations, the COVID-19 pandemic really brought to light um, issues with internet connectivity in the US and the UK that haven't been as clear in the past. In particular, that there are many, many families with insufficient access to the internet, unable to get their students into online schooling, for example, when communities went into lockdown. And our teams did a wonderful job of digging into the subtleties of that term insufficient, because no longer is it simply about what percentage of households have a connection to the internet. We're talking about exactly how fast of an internet connection they have and does it serve the needs of how they are using the internet today. Um, beyond changes in new things we saw due to COVID-19, we're also at a really interesting time for the internet because technology is changing rapidly. In the past couple of years, we've seen 5G technology roll out that's able to provide broadband, like connected wired internet like speeds over the air without any need for a wireless connection. It was a huge part of solving some of these problems that arose during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so we we're really happy students got to dig into that new technology for the problem as well. Uh, this changing technology, the changing needs around broadband are clearly changing the conversation on this topic. If you've been following the news in the past couple of months since the challenge, I think this is very clear. So President Biden announced a huge infrastructure plan and there's a $100 billion proposal in there to improve the United States broadband infrastructure. In my home state of New York, there was just a law passed that said internet service providers have to provide $15 a month broadband internet for low income families or $20 for if you want a 200 megabytes per second connection. So I think the modeling that our students did this year is exactly what would be needed to evaluate this sort of legislation, make sure it rolls out in an effective way, plan how to best serve our communities and our countries in terms of connectivity. You should all feel really proud that you were able to say something very meaningful about a problem that is very, very current to present day. And I think you'd be surprised that the people who are making these sort of decisions don't know that much more than you do. Like this work you're doing from the ground up is exactly what they need to be doing. And you guys are doing it at pretty much at the professional level you, you would see behind like government decisions, policy decisions. Um, so that's really cool. I wanted to close by a couple comments on approaches this year. So I, I lead the technical computing judging. Um, it's really hard to say there are trends in what students do. When I, when I watch the presentations, I'm sort of blown away by the variety of student solutions. Like we always think we know how you guys are gonna solve a problem and then you solve it 10 different ways. So I can't say there are clear trends, but one thing that really jumped out to us this year was a lot of students use Monte Carlo simulation in a really effective way, especially in determining internet use to do uncertainty quantification um, for many, many different aspects of their model. So I was really happy to see that because it was a really cool way to leverage technical computing. We also saw, saw a lot of technical computing in the last problem, which was challenging because that problem dealt with spatial data. I got muted. One sec. Okay. I'm back. As I was saying, the last problem dealt with spatial data. You had to place 5G nodes on a map. That was a really challenging problem to approach. It's not even clear how to get that data into a computer program, how you should represent it, how you should work with it. We were really happy to see a lot of creative solutions for dealing with that type of spatial data. We saw people using image editing software to modify maps and then load them as images. We saw some teams using GIS software so kudos to all the teams who thought outside the box and were able to attack that challenging final problem 
head on. It was another great year of solutions, stellar technical computing. Um, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'm very proud of all the work you guys did. So thank you so much. Um, that's all I have. I would like to now introduce Shandor Leoski of Jane Street. Jane Street is a quantitative trading firm with a focus on technology and collaborative problem solving. And Chandler oversees a significant portion of Jane Street's trading, manages firm ride risk and strategy, and is actively involved in their internship program and recru recruiting. He's also a former math Olympian. Um, so Chandler, we'd love to hear from you. Hi, uh, what I'm not is very good at Zoom. So please wave your arms around if you can't hear me or something like that. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I'm coming to you from Jane Street. Um, we have been at the forefront of quantitative trading for quite a long time. Um, and I think it's a really cool example of a field that the type of work that you're doing, uh, similar to what Dr. Uh, Musco just described, can take you into because many of the things that we're doing, many of the types of modeling we're doing are also extremely similar um, to a lot of the things and a lot of the types of problems that you're doing. Um, just to give you a little bit of a capsule of, of how it is that math comes into finance, you might think finance, buying, selling stocks, bonds. There, I guess there are numbers, but I don't exactly know what that means, uh, which by the way was my state of knowledge when I got into the business. I sort of had a vague idea that I wanted to do something where I could make a living and used math. Uh, and well, finance, I had vaguely heard involved math and maybe I could make a living doing it. So uh, I went into it and it's worked out pretty well. Um, so when our firm started, one of the very basic trades that we did was uh, we would buy a stock in the United States. And at the same time, the same stock in a slightly different form, but essentially the same stock would be trading in Europe. Um, so you could buy it in the United States and you could sell the same stock in Europe. Um, and other than the fact that the currencies were different, so you'd be buying in United States dollars and selling in euros. Uh, you could do that in a way that would lock in some money. So you might then have to do a trade in that currency to balance that out. Uh, but it was all very simple and not really a ton of math involved in a trade like that. Um, it immediately gets a little bit more interesting though, if you think about instead of trading a stock in the United States versus Europe, if you imagine trading a stock in the United States versus, for example, Japan, um, because there's a small problem that at no point are the Japanese markets open and trading at the same time that the United States markets are open and trading. So you simply cannot look at the price in the US and say, okay, I'll buy or sell in Japan at that price because they're not trading at the same time. And by the time you might say, well, if I bought it for a hundred at you know, four o'clock in the United States at the end of the day, why don't I just sell it for the equivalent converted across the currency of 101 in Japan when they open? Um, which depending on the daylight savings time is either seven or 8 p.m. in New York time. Um, and the answer is, well, a lot might've happened in between. Maybe there was news. Maybe there was a change in the market. Maybe a lot of people came in to sell. And so suddenly, uh, instead of still being worth 100 in the United States, it would be worth 99 or 98. So lots of things can change. And so what you're really trying to do is solve the problem of, given everything else you know, about what's happening in the markets, what's trading in the markets, which might be news of a form that only you could kind of read with your eyes, but it might also be of the form of other things that are trading, um, prices of other financial instruments, where would you expect that if this stock were open and trading in the United States, it would be trading right now uh, at this time? And so that could be a really complicated problem. It might be very simple. So you might be, it might be as simple as saying, well, this stock is a big stock in the S&P 500 index of stocks. That index since the United States closed at four has moved up 1%. This stock usually moves in line with that index. So this stock should be 1% higher. Uh, but maybe it's more complicated than that. Maybe this is an airline stock, which in addition to having a sensitivity to what the market does has an additional sensitivity to what oil does or, or things involving travel or other things like that. So. As you begin, I mean, if you, you can just, where you're sitting now, imagine all of the things that might affect the value of an airline stock. Uh, there are things that are specific to that stock, specific to the country it's in. Um, so the big airline stock in the US is Boeing. Uh, sorry, I mean, the, the big aircraft maker stock in the US is Boeing and the big aircraft maker in Europe is Airbus. 
those companies might have very different things influencing their prices. Um, so as you unpack your imagination in exactly the same way that you've unpacked this complicated problem for M3, you, have to th you really have to think, what are all of the things that might affect my belief as to what this stock would be doing if it were open? So you're working on a, on a sort of contrafactual situation. Um, and that's just the beginning. The relationships get more complex. They can become nonlinear. So I work primarily today with options. Uh, options are products that, for example, as the stock goes up, the value of the option might go up with the stock. But as the stock goes down, the option might no longer lose value. It might just go to zero and stop. Um, so because of that nonlinearity, the option moves up with the stock, but does not move down with the stock, its pricing can be very complicated and some super interesting mathematical problems come out of that, which fit in the general area of what's called stochastic calculus. Um, when you get to college, definitely encourage you to learn about that. It's, it's really fascinating and just a lot of really interesting things going on right now. Um, so what you are doing is I think the coolest, and most interesting stuff that can be done. Um, I came out of a math Olympiad background, which is more, what I would describe math Olympiad is it's a problem in a box. There's a very clear problem. Uh, there's a very clear solution that the person who wrote the problem knows exactly what the solution is that they're looking for. Maybe you've got some variety. You can use a slightly different method, but we know what the answer is. We can read your, we can read what you did and just know you got it right. You didn't get it right, um, which is cool. It's very interesting. There's a lot of creativity in that kind of mathematical problem solving. For any of you who are doing Olympiad level math, awesome for you. Um, but what I think is really cool about M3 and, and this type of modeling challenge is in the real world, nobody knows what the answer is. In the real world, you're getting problems of this very open-ended type and you're having to think what's important, what's not important, what are the factors I care about, what are the factors I don't care about. And, and then you're going to build a mathematical model and see how it plays out. If I make different assumptions, how is that going to affect how things play out? And as you've seen, if you if you followed any of the of the work that's happened in terms of vaccine modeling, any of the modeling that's going on at the CDC or other places in terms of, if I assume the virus propagates at this rate or other things that happen, how will that affect, you know, the trade-offs involved in mask wearing, the trade-offs involved in vaccines, the trade-offs involved in lockdowns, all of that is just a big mathematical modeling problem, and nobody knows the answers. But we're we're getting better. We're devising different methods and modes, and I think this kind of open-ended mathematical problem solving is really a very close mirror of the kinds of mathematical problem solving that happen at a place like Jane Street and really throughout the real world where you just don't know the answer um, before you start. Um, the last thing I'll maybe mention about Jane Street is our culture is really awesome. Uh, it's a really fun place to be. And, and uh, you know, obviously I'm, I'm saying some nice things about Jane Street because I'm there, but just in general, I think math is going to take you into places and into areas where that are fun to be. So if, if you're nerdy and you like this kind of stuff, um, or maybe even not so nerdy, you just like this kind of stuff, uh, you're generally going to like the kinds of people that do this kind of stuff. Um, and you know, it leads into Silicon Valley, it leads into quantitative finance, it leads into academic work in math or statistics or computer science. And these are all just amazing areas where you can just do really, you can simultaneously Venn diagram do do something really fun and interesting and, and that is like solving a problem or a puzzle, but that's also really making a positive impact on the world. Um, so the culture of math, I think, is something really powerful and profound, and it goes well beyond just the specific problems that you're solving. Um, so yeah, congratulations. What you've done is really, truly excellent. And I think the power of the techniques that you're learning and the, and the ideas that you're building and the culture that you're growing and the network that you're building within that culture uh, are really, really powerful things. Um, the last thing I would like to just get a quick word in about is I, I'm a, a sort of co-founder and I'm involved in running a charity called BEAM, which help, help tries to bring math to kids from underserved areas, underserved populations. Um, if you're at all interested in, in getting involved on the kind of social uh, social side or, or giving back to the community side, we are trying to create on-ramps into the kind of work you all are doing, but for kids across a huge variety of schools across, um, across America. So um, I'm really excited about that work. And I, I think the biggest problem with math is um, that it's just not necessarily accessible to everybody. Not everybody has the resources uh, that maybe I had or maybe that you have, and I, I hope you know, we can expand that to everybody. Um, but I love math. I think it's awesome you guys are doing it and, and, and keep at it. It just leads you into everything 
cool that's going on in the world today. Um, I would like to, on that note, and speaking of cool things going on in the world today, I'd like to introduce uh, Cleve Moeller. Uh, he's the chief mathematician chairman and co-founder of MathWorks. He invented the first version of MATLAB in 1984. Uh, he also led SIAM as the president for two years, 2007 to 2002. Yes? Oh, uh, he continues to contribute to computational communities, including recent work with Dr. Musco on the judging for the M3 Technical Computing Awards. So I'll turn it over to Dr. Muller. Uh, hi, everybody. Congratulations. It's been a terrific day. I was a little hard on some of you, but uh, realized that I just how much work you had to do to get to the point where I could be hard on you. So congratulations on reaching that plateau. Um, after math works, I love Siam. I've been a member of SIAM since I was a student. Uh, I guess I've been a member here 60 years. It's been a, the most important thing in my professional life after MATLAB. And the M3 challenge is a continuation of that uh, connection with, with the SIAM. I was also a SIAM lecturer this uh, uh, last year and gave the SIAM lecture to SIAM chapters in half a dozen places around the world, virtually. Um, so become a member of SIAM. As a student, you could become a member for free if you have a member nominate you. If you don't have a member, Right handy to nominate you, send me email, molar at mathworks.com, M O L E R at mathworks.com, and I'll nominate you. There's a limit of there's a limit of two people, two students that Siam member gets to nominate, but I think I'll I'd, I'd like I'd like to go over that limit. So uh, write to me and uh, so you'd be a, you'd like to be a student member, and we'll you can become a member for free. Uh, so, again, congratulations! Thanks for a very interesting day, and um, keep in touch. Now, I want to, I get to introduce somebody. I want to introduce another introducer. So I want to introduce Michelle Montgomery who's the heart and soul of, the, of, of MQ. Uh, Michelle, thank you very much. It's been a great day. Adrian, thank you for your work. Uh, Michelle, take it away. Thank you, Cleve. Thank you so much. Uh, moving along, Tanya Karuvala is the technical lead for student competitions at MathWorks. She works on mathematical competitions for high school students and primarily focuses on M3 Challenge. MathWorks, as you've probably figured out, is the title sponsor of M3 Challenge and is well aligned with the goals of the competition and with SIAM in inspiring young people to study and pursue careers in applied math, computational science, data science, and technical computing. There's a long history of collaboration and friendship between MathWorks and SIAM. So it was a natural and positive progression when our organizations began working together on MathWorks Math Modeling Challenge. Tanya, along with Helen Lomas, Global Academic Marketing Specialist for MathWorks, will be presenting the Outstanding Communication of Results Awards and the M3 Challenge Technical Computing Scholarship Awards. Tanya. Thanks, Michelle. Hi, everybody. Congratulations. Um, awesome job. This is my first time here, and it was so great to watch all of your presentations and uh, creative solutions to this year's problem statement. Um, I think it's so great for all of you who participated to see how uh, relevant math modeling is in the real world and that mathematicians are actually using this 
to predict the future and find solutions to real world problems. So at MathWorks, we make uh, MATLAB and Simulink, which are technical computing platforms. And it was amazing to see that some of you used a programming platform for your solutions. We believe that the combination of mathematics and computer science is important for students today and for the future. Uh, so we love the M3 Challenge and our collaboration with Siam, and this is yet another wonderful opportunity for us to help motivate students to consider and pursue STEM careers. So congratulations once again to all the finalists, and I'd now like to introduce my colleague, Helen, who is going to announce the Communication Awards. Cool. Thanks, Tanya. Um, it's great to be here. Um, as Michelle mentioned, I work on student competitions all over the world here at MathWorks. Um, I'm actually based in our Cambridge office here in the UK. So of course, I was super excited uh, when it was announced that the competition would include England and Wales. Um, and it's been terrific to see the participation of schools from England and Wales as we've been through the competition, uh, especially here for the first time in 2021. Um, and I really wish we could all be in New York um, together so we could all give you all kind of a proper round of applause. Um, so the Outstanding Communication of Results Awards are determined during the final event and are given to teams whose presentations had the best overall clarity, presence and polish. This award adds $500 to the team prize amount. Well, all the presentations were absolutely terrific and they showed creativity, teamwork, tremendous effort. Um, we have selected four teams for this award and the schools deemed to have the best presentations today are starting with school number one, um, team 14679 King Edward School from Bath, Somerset, England. Everyone kind of around for that one. Um, school number two, Team 14665, Julia R. Masterson High School from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Congratulations. Uh, school number three, Team 14486, Adelaide Stevenson High School from Lincolnshire, Illinois. And finally, uh, last but no means least, Team number four, 14656, New Ava School from Hillsborough, California. Congratulations, everybody. They were absolutely excellent presentations. It's been great watching those this afternoon. Um, so now Tanya will announce the Technical Computing Awards and I will hand back to Tanya. Thanks, Helen. So the M3 Challenge Technical Computing Scholarship Award honors teams for outstanding use of programming to analyze, design, and conceive a solution for the challenge problem. This award may be overlaid and added on to any other M3 Challenge Prize, and it can go to a team that did not win another award. So congratulations to the three teams that presented today on your exemplary work in technical computing. In third place, this paper stood out for its creative and ambitious use of technical computing. It took into account information about things like road locations, elevation, and conservation land when deciding cellular node locations, all in all, it was a fun report to read with a lot of great ideas. Winning the M3 Challenge Technical Computing third place team prize of $1,000 goes to Pineview School team 14525 from Osprey, Florida. For runner up, this paper exemplified quality over quantity in its use of technical computing. The code was extremely well commented and structured, and all models could easily be understood without referring back to the paper. The students used well-chosen variable and function names, and the judges were happy to see effective code reuse. Winning the M3 Challenge Technical Computing Runner-Up Team Prize of $2,000 goes to Richard Montgomery High School, Team 14928 from Rockville, Maryland. Now coming to the winner. This paper effectively used technical computing for all three parts of the question. Student took, students took advantage of the ability to easily change parameters in their code to run sensitivity analysis where appropriate. Technical computing was also used to create effective and compelling visuals of the report. Overall, a phenomenal paper that the judges were very happy to select as winner. In first place, the winner of the M3 Challenge Technical Computing Scholarship Prize of $3,000 goes to Nueva School Team 14656 from Hillsborough, California. Congratulations.
So now we have our school student spokesperson, Elliot Chen, will now say a few words on behalf of their team. Well, all right. Well, first, I um, want to say thank you so much to uh, the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics, um, MathWorks, and, and Jane Street um, for putting on this competition. We, we had a ton of fun. I want to acknowledge uh, my team members, Ryan Cheng, Joseph Krauss, Sebastian Deary, and Nikhil Thakur, um, who are on this call today. Um, they were, it, it was, it was, uh, we had a great experience collaborating together. I also want to give a, a huge shout out to our coach, Ted Theodosopoulos. Um, he, he really got each of us, um, every one of our, our members of the team involved in uh, math modeling and computing through his, through his classes. And we, we would not be here today without him. Um, this is kind of a, I was kind of surprised. Um, that we're up, I'm up here giving this speech, given that the, the judges had some uh, very, very interesting questions about our, our code and our uh, paper. But regardless, uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I think that just shows that as, as much work as we've done and as far as we've come, there's always room to learn more. And um, I think we're all excited to, to do that in college and beyond. Uh, the M3 competition has definitely kind of uh, sparked something within each of us in terms of being excited about technical computing and, and wanting to pursue it in the future. Um, so again, huge thank you um, to MathWorks and, and to everyone. Uh, this was a fantastic experience and, and we learned a lot. That's great. Congratulations to the both the Outstanding Communication Awardees and the teams whose paper won technical computing prizes. And thanks, Tanya and Helen. Dr. Karen Bliss submitted her first problem idea to M3 Challenge in 2012 and subsequently co-wrote the recycling problem, food insecurity problem, substance abuse problem, and electric trucking problem. She leads the problem development committee and directs contention judging for overall M3 Challenge submission assessment. Dr. Bliss is a professor at Virginia Military Institute. Dr. Bliss will announce the highest ranking UK team and then what we've all been waiting for, the M3 Challenge third place, runner up and champion teams. Dr. Bliss. Thank you so much, Michelle. And I just wanna say greetings and welcome again. I think we're finally at the, the end where we get to announce the actual award presentations. Um, I just want to uh, say again how grateful I am to be working with this an amazing team at Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics in conjunction with the MathWorks to pull this challenge off every year. Um, I think they make it look easy and I'm so grateful for them. Um, this year we asked teams to weigh in on potential solutions for bridging the digital divide. Uh, this topic is particularly meaningful this year. Um, you know, so many people don't have reliable access to the internet and the pandemic has made that divide even more prominent as many industries and schools pivoted online, disadvantaging even further those who already struggled with access. Uh, the solution has, the, the problem has no easy solution um, and it requires innovative thinking and careful analysis. Um, and no one knows the answer. So we put something in front of you that, uh, that was definitely a real challenge. Um, I'm a member of that problem development committee and every year we try and pose questions that we think are going to be relevant and challenging and inspire high school students like you to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and computer science. And every year we continue to be blown away by the work that is produced by talented teams in just 14 hours. And some days I just have to remind myself, like you all did this in 14 hours and that is insane. So um, uh, it, it's a big deal that you made it here and we are so proud of you. Um, every paper undergoes a calibrated triage round of judging, and we see those better papers rise to the top through several more reading rounds by experienced mathematicians and modelers. And um, 
Each team on this call had their paper scored by more than 12 judges who scrutinized the best papers and had the very, very, very difficult job of deciding which papers would take the top prizes. Uh, teams on this call are among the top six of the hundreds of papers that were submitted. And I am truly humbled to be part of the group that gets to honor your work today. You all are the best of the best. Uh, so before proceeding to the overall finalist awards and the announcement of the final ranking of the top three papers in the M3 challenge, uh, we want to give a big shout out to the highest ranking team from the UK uh, in the first year of eligibility for students for the UK. This team had an innovative approach for modeling required bandwidth or needs by thinking about how much time a person spends on an activity, the probability that they would at a given moment in time switch activities. Uh, judges used words like well-written, fresh ideas, and one of the best to describe this paper. Uh, winning an M3 Challenge Honorable Mention Team Award of $1,000, which is 716 pounds. Uh, King Edward School from Bath, Somerset, England. Congratulations. The team's uh, student spokesperson, Philip Ochko, will now say a few words on behalf of their team. Thank you very much. So first of all, I would like to thank MathWorks, Sam, and anyone else involved in the organization of this amazing competition, as well as for allowing us to participate in this amazing event today. We are very happy to be able to represent our school as well as our country out here today. It was a really fun experience and it was really enjoyable being able to experience maths in a real world context. It was something completely different and unique from the much more close ended school curriculum and allowed my teammates and I to branch out uh, to previously unknown applications for mathematics. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Thanks, Philip. Okay, finalist awards honor the top six teams overall for outstanding mathematical approaches to the three main prompts in the challenge problem. Teams are required to create mathematical models, justify assumptions, define parameters, describe their process, analyze effects of change, and describe results. I am now going to announce the top three teams. So we'll start with third place, then runner up and champion. Uh, teams that placed in the top six that I do not announce finished as finalists and will receive team awards of $6,500. So in third place, I feel like I need a drum roll. This team's paper was lauded by the contention judges for its consistency, giving solid, thoughtful solutions for all three questions, including taking advantage of the model that they developed in question two to help answer the question in question number three. Um, additionally, judges valued this that this team included conclusions, validation, and sensitivity analyses for all three questions. Winning the M3 challenge, third place team prize of $12,000 is Johns Creek High School team number 14482 from Johns Creek, Georgia. Congratulations. The team spokesperson, Aditya Bora, will now uh, say a few words on behalf of their team. Hi, everyone. My name is Aditya Bora, and I'm a member of team 14482 from Johns Creek High School in Atlanta, Georgia. As a team, we would like to begin by thanking our teacher sponsor, Ms. Julie Meir, for providing us with the resources to compete in this amazing challenge. My team and I have competed in the M3 Modeling Challenge for the past two years, and it has become one of our favorite events during the school year. This challenge allowed us to take concepts we've learned from our schooling and apply them to solve a real-world challenge. While sometimes math homework is not always the most enjoyable, me and my teammates have learned from this challenge that math is one of the most powerful tools we have as a species. Math is the medium through which we can understand the complex world around us, a notion which the M3 modeling challenge exemplified. As an aspiring computer scientist, I can personally say that this opportunity has been instrumental in helping me form my career aspirations. As a team, we would like to thank MathWorks, the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics, Jane Street, and the modeling challenge team, as well as the mentors who took time to review our solution. Our team considers ourselves very fortunate to have been able to compete in this challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Aditya. 
Uh, okay, runner up. This team's paper was deemed exceptional by judges in part because they did a sensitivity analysis for all questions and they helped the judges interpret their solutions. They also included a discussion of weaknesses, letting the judges know that they were aware of the limitations of their work. In second place, winning the M3 Challenge runner-up team prize of $17,000 is High Technology High School, team number 14694 from Lincroft, New Jersey. Congratulations. Uh, the team's student spokesperson, Aditya Balajadran, sorry if I mispronounced your name, will now say a few words on behalf of your team. Hi, so first I would like to thank uh, Siam, MathWorks, Jane Street, um, the N3 Challenge organizers, reviewers, and judges, and of course our coach, uh, Dr. Eng, and High Technology at High School for giving us this opportunity to participate in the M3 Challenge. It was an amazing opportunity for us to work together as a team to formulate and apply mathematical models to solve these real world problems, uh, such as providing equitable high speed internet access, which has become especially important during the pandemic. It was an amazing experience where we learned not just about the practical challenges, but also how to apply math to analyze and gain insights on the effectiveness of potential uh, solutions. So three of us on the team uh, Lasia, Hazem, and myself are seniors this year, and we'll be looking forward to apply our skills to other interesting problems that we encounter in college and beyond. Um, I would also strongly encourage uh, rising juniors and seniors to participate in the M3 Challenge because it introduces you to a new world where uh, problems are not well-defined and answers are often imperfect, but they're still very highly impactful. Thank you again. Thank you, Aditya. Um, this time every year I start getting teary eyed. I'm gonna try and hold it together. Um, we are just so proud of the work that you all have done. Okay, and here goes uh, the champion team. The top team had solid reason solutions for all three parts of the challenge. Judges particularly liked the way that they used simulations to determine bandwidth for various households. To determine optimal placement of cellular nodes, they included maps to describe the locations of the towers uh, within the regions, which only a handful of teams did well. Their paper was well written and their use of graphics enhanced their work and helped facilitate the understanding of their solutions. In first place, winning the M3 Challenge Champion Team Prize of $22,500 is Livingston High School, team 14817 from Livingston, New Jersey. Congratulations. And now we'll hear from this team's student spokesperson, Sidan Srivastava. Hi, everyone. Uh, on the behalf of our team, which is Charles Yu, Edward Wang, Leo Stepanuk, Adita Desai, and I, it has been an honor and pleasure to compete in this year's MathWorks Math Modeling Challenge. Despite the challenges set forth by COVID-19, we are grateful to have this opportunity to present our solution to judges and coaches. As a top three team, we also wanna applaud all the other teams who have exhibited a shared mathematical curiosity today. We also wanna extend a heartfelt thank you to our advisor, Ms. Corson, and the Livingston High School Math Department for their support over the past few months. And lastly, we wanna thank MathWorks employees and judges for presenting us this valuable opportunity to learn and grow as a team. Since our first meeting, we have learned a lot about problem solving and effective teamwork. I recall our 14 hour journey filled with humor, coordination and excitement. From eating cold pizza to collaborating on code, we had an absolute blast competing. Today's presentation undoubtedly came with some anxiety and anxiousness, but we were all able to pull through and share our findings together. As we continue to move towards a new digital age, we believe that mathematical modeling will be a valuable tool in the near future and are appreciative to have had the sample into the diverse field. Once again, thank you to all the judges and sponsors for making this possible. Thank you. Congratulations again, and thank you, Sidant. Um, now I would like to hand things back over to challenge director, uh, Michelle Montgomery for some concluding remarks. 
Thank you, Dr. Bliss, and congratulations to this year's champion, runner-up, and third-place teams. Giant props as well to the two finalist teams from Stevenson High School in Lincolnshire, Illinois. That's pretty rare. And the finalist team from Masterman High School, uh, middle school and high school in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Siam's hometown as well. All of these finalist teams submitted impressive and superior work, rising to the top of over 500 other teams. A great big thank you to MathWorks, the leading developer of mathematical computing software for making M3 Challenge possible. It's promotion, judging, systems, prizes, among all the other things. Um, and also for supporting the challenge through free software licenses and tutorials for teachers and students to learn code to enhance their math modeling efforts. It's a pleasure to work with the great folks at MathWorks. Thank you also to Jane Street, our New York City host in non-pandemic times um, for continuing many of their hosting activities even in a virtual environment this year. And lastly, thank you to Siam for providing the foundation, an amazing community of members, professionals and staff to build all the aspects of the challenge and allow it to grow and thrive. To close out, we're going to show the best of 2021 M3 Challenge video. This is a compilation of clips sent to us by teams about their challenge weekend experience. There might be some slight lags or bumps in how, to, how you view the video, but if you wanna stay on for about two more minutes, you can give it a shot. This concludes the formal program for the awards ceremony Congrats to all and have a great night. Are, are we all ready? Yeah. Okay, three, two, one. It's 7 a.m. and Uh, the actual problem, we liked how relevant it was to COVID-19 and how it affects all of our lives and how much uh, Wi-Fi we all need and the bandwidth and the strength. So we all really liked how uh, relevant the actual problem was. But again, there's a bit of a difficulty in understanding abstract concepts like bandwidth and megabits per second. Our final problem, we had to be very careful with our time management. Because while 14 hours may sound like a long time, time can fly very fast when you're doing math. Fortunately, we were able to come up with a solution using one of our previous models. Looking back, there is a lot of things that we could have done better, but there's always room for improvement, and we're proud of what we achieved because we gave it everything we had. Ultimately, it was a really fun learning experience for all of us, and we can't wait for next year. It says we should solution upload. Nice! Yeah.